Hari Om, Mana TV International Yogis. Thanks for joining in again. We're here today to give a sample yoga class. And if you've been keeping up with the asana portion, you'll be ready to join us for this. If you haven't, it might not be that easy to follow along because we're not going to give as full instructions as we would normally. So, hope you'll get ready for a nice yoga class and enjoy. Parvati here is such a, it's such a blessing getting to do yoga with her. So, have fun. Okay, let's do this yoga class here now. So get the body situated, sit cross-legged, however that's comfortable for you. Lift the chest up, pull the shoulders back and let them settle down. Soften the face and eyes and jaw. And take a few nice deep breaths. Inhale, pause for a moment, exhale a little slower. Let your attention be drawn inward, the body soften, and consider what you're about to do. A yoga session, this great science of yoga to bring you into the union. Your finite self with your infinite self. Now please take in a breath and join me chanting Om. Oh. Again, we'll raise the pitch. Oh. Lower pitch again. Thank you, Parvati. Will you? We're going to do a sun salutation. So please step about one foot back from the front of the mat. Wiggle the body loose a little. Shake the arms out, the wrists, the fingers. You might shake each leg loose for a moment. Just get the body freed up some because we're about to go through a flowing series here. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to do three rounds of sun salutation and we're going to go through them pretty quickly here. One, palms together in front of the chest. Two, sweep the arms forward, thumbs touching, arch back. Three, hinge forward, stretch out, come down, wiggle loose, put the hands beside the feet and step the left foot back, knee down to the floor, look up. Bring the right foot back next to the left, press into the palm, stretch out through the heels. Six, lower the knees, chest and chin, hips raised, soften the back. Seven, bring the belly forward and down, raise the head, neck and chest, shoulders back. Eight, press back to an inverted V, look toward the feet. Nine, step the left foot up between the hands, right knee down, push the hips forward and look up. Ten, step the, left foot, the right foot forward and flatten the legs. Eleven, sweep the arms forward and up. Hips out front, arch back, and come on up 12 palms together in front of the chest. Soften the shoulders, let go. Very good. <clears throat> so the next round will lead with the right leg going back to start, and then the right foot stepping forward toward the end. And <clears throat> here we go. Palms together, sweep the arms forward, arch back. Hinging forward, come down, put the right foot back, and we're going to come up into Anjaneyasana. Stretch back, 
and bring the hands framing the front foot and step the left foot back, downward facing dog. Now leaning forward, come into upward facing dog, please. Look up and press back to downward facing dog and lower the knees, chest and chin. And coming forward up into cobra, press back to downward facing dog. And go ahead and step the right foot up and bring the arms up and back for Anjaneyasana. Hands framing the foot, step forward with the left foot, flatten the legs, sweep the arms forward and up, arch back, and palms together in front of the chest. Let go, loosen the body, be at ease. We'll do one more, and we're going to make this one very simple as well, except we'll coordinate it with the breathing. So right now, before any movement with the palms together, just inhale, exhale, sweep the arms forward, and as you arch back, inhale, coming forward and down, exhale, hands beside the feet, left foot back, knee on the ground, inhale, look up, bring the right foot back, downward facing dog, exhale, look toward the feet, now lower the knees, chest and chin, and then come forward and up and inhale as you come up into cobra, press back to downward facing dog, exhale, Step the left foot up, right knee down, inhale, look up, and step the right foot forward, exhale, straighten the legs, hang down, sweep the arms forward and up, inhale as you arch back, and exhale, palms together in front of the chest, be centered and soft. Enjoy what you feel inside, what the postures have been doing, are doing still for you. Good, make sure the feet are apart some and the hips and belly and lower back are loose. Make sure the hands are outside of the hips somewhat so the armpits and shoulders are free. And just let the body release being supported by the floor for Shavasana. Okay. <clears throat> Please now Roll over to the belly, and we're going to do Dhanurasana, the bow pose. If anyone has glasses at home, take the glasses off, set them aside. So lie on the abdomen, legs together, toes back. Place the forehead on the floor and place the palms on next to the chest, elbows pointed toward the sky. Now keeping the pubic bone grounded, lengthen through the torso and neck and raise the head, neck, and chest. And you want to have the crown of the head reaching up toward the sky, shoulders pulling back, buttocks tightened a little bit. And as you breathe, lengthen the spine, focus awareness, sit it in between the shoulder blades and look at everything from that perspective. If you'd like, you can gaze with the eyes looking up. Don't crunch the neck back, but you can look up with the eyes. Beautiful. Come up one more inch, and now gently down, just as much awareness, forehead to the floor, bring the hands back next to the hips, turn the head to one side, let the feet come apart a little, wiggle loose through the hips, elbows bend out a little, loosen the fingers and wrists, and just let go, everything soft, advasana. Beautiful. Okay, so please now roll over to the back, we'll do a little bit of forward bending. With a short class, we can only do a few postures, but we'll try to do them and really... Okay, bring the legs together, arms overhead. Lengthen, inhale, swing the arms up and sit up. We're going to do Dandasana, the staff pose. So put the arms in front of you, push out through the heels and pull the toes back. Push out through the heels of the hands, pull the fingers back. Now pull the elbows and hands back, spread the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades toward one another and down, and let the hands gently float down till they touch the floor. No pressure on the hands, just a touch. Buttocks tightened a little bit, 
and bring the attention up to the head and from the bridge of the nose shoot a laser beam out that goes not just across the room but all the way for miles and become aware of this staff of energy, the Sushumna, the central energy channel that flows from beneath the base of the spine right up through the crown, through the spinal pathway. Okay, very good. Let go of all the tension of the Dandasana, the staff pose, wiggle loose. And now we're going to do Paschimottanasana. So once again, with the legs together, push out through the heels, clear the sits bones. And you want to lead with the belly. So come forward, you can bring the arms up and then hinge forward the belly. Reach for the wall in front of you. Stretch out, then grab hold of the feet if the feet are convenient or grab hold of the ankles or leg, that's fine. And pull the chest forward. Pull forward some and then surrender the torso down, surrender the head down, no more pulling. Keep your hands touching the feet or legs. Parvati, if you'd like, you can bring your hands all the way around and interlock the fingers. That would be fine. And as you breathe in this, sit your awareness in the pelvic area and view everything from that perspective. As you breathe, let things soften with the exhalations, with the inhalations, let them be toned up, massaged. Be sure to soften the shoulders and neck, the eyes, the lower back, even the jaw, soft, elbows sagging. Your awareness goes deep within. Now, bring the arms over the legs, stretch out long, head between the arms, lift the hands up, and gently lower back to the ground with control, building up core strength. Bring the hands next to the hips, separate the feet some, and come again into Shavasana, the corpse pose, wiggle loose and let go. Very nice. So we're going to do an inversion next, and we'll do Sarvangasana, the shoulder stand. <clears throat> if you're at home doing this, sometimes it's not appropriate to do shoulder stand if you have a, a soreness in the neck, or you have high blood pressure or glaucoma, heavy flow of menses. Those are times to skip shoulder stand. You could stand up and hang down, but don't work into shoulder stand right now. Be safe. On the other hand, if you don't have those issues, shoulder stand is the best. It's the queen of all the postures. So make sure your shirt is tucked in. If it's loose, you, if you have long hair, sweep it out from behind the back and the back of the head. Make sure there's no hair under the shoulders so it won't get pulled. Now bring your legs together, your arms in close to the body with the palms down, pressing it in the palms, swing the legs up and overhead so the back comes off the floor, put the hands on the back, and then push with the hands. You might walk the hands a little toward the shoulder blades to get the chest pressed in a little tighter to the chin, and bring the feet up, and now, Try to take the breathing pattern you use when you're going to sleep. It's not super deep, but it's a little deeper, a little slower. And as you take this breathing pattern on, the body gets a signal to let go of any tensions that aren't needed. And things begin to open up and flow. And the posture will open up and bring you its myriad benefits. Here you sit the awareness and look at everything from the perspective of the thyroid gland region, the base of the throat, Vishuddhi Chakra. There's a pool of energy building there, and you just sort of hang out in that pool. We 
like to hold this a little longer than other poses. If you're finding the lower back getting stiff, you can bend the knees down toward the forehead with the feet toward the buttocks, and that releases the lower back beautifully. And then after a few breaths, you can straighten up again. See if you can get a little straighter. A few more breaths before we come out. Of course, whenever you're doing this practice, if you think you should come out of it, go ahead, any pose. Only hold it as long as it's comfortable for you. So now coming out of this pose, bring the legs overhead, the feet toward the floor. They don't have to touch the floor, but if they do, that's fine. If the feet are on the floor, Parvati, go ahead and interlock the fingers for the, the plow pose, Alasana. Now put the palms down on the floor and roll down one vertebra at a time. Try to do it with control. Keep the head pulled back to the floor, feel the massage to the spine. And when you get the buttocks down, Try to keep the legs straight as you lower the legs, strengthening the core region. When you get all the way down, wiggle loose. And then we're going to do Matsyasana, fish pose, which is a beautiful complement to the shoulder stand. And it releases the neck, which is required after you finish doing shoulder stand. You must do something to release the neck. So legs together, reach the arms way down along the side of the body, pressing to the elbows, pulling on the hands, sit up just halfway, and then bring the chest and belly up and arch back, putting the top of the head down to the floor. Take deep breaths through the nostrils, soften the jaw. Let the legs be as soft as they can. Deep breaths. Besides completing the toning of the thyroid and parathyroid glands started in the shoulder stand and releasing the neck, this has myriad benefits of its own, the fish pose cleanses the respiratory system, corrects posture problems, helps to do away with headaches. It's a great posture. Okay, so coming out, hold firmly with the hands, push in the elbows and pull, lift the head back up, tuck the chin, pull the belly back, and then lie down. You wanna pull the belly back before you lie down so that you stretch out that lower back region. Again, Come into Shavasana, 